Okay, so here's lecture number two. This lecture will be a bit shorter, but the result is that the next lecture will be fairly long. I don't know why, but okay, let's just let's just take this lecture as like the warm up for lecture number three. Okay, so we're gonna introduce the order and product topology this time. <laughs> just two types of topology today. Okay, so order topology. Before that, we have to know what's the order relations. So a relation on a set is called order relation or simply order, a linear order. If for x and y such that they're not equal, then either x, c, y, or y, c, x. So this relation could be like the, it could also be this sign. So this thing is like easier to see, right? So either x is less than y or y is less than x. And x less than x does not hold. Okay, so this relation, so for example, this is not simple order, right? Because in real numbers, x less than equal to x is true, but we require that this does not hold. So like the strictly less than is a, a satisfied. And it also has a transitivity, okay? So x less than y, y less than z, and the x less than z. Okay, so simply order set. And now with these ordered relation, right, and give it elements A and B such that this is true, then there are four subsets of X, it's called like intervals. You can form intervals. So the open interval is basically a set of all X satisfy the order relation. Next look, this, 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 this. All right, we just, we all know what's an interval since like high school, right? But now we're gonna generate a topology using these sets. So how? From last course, you might think, oh, we learned how to generate a topology by a basis, right? Or just like take arbitrary unions. We just take arbitrary unions. Well, yes, correct. So <coughs> let X be a simple order relation. So we have, assume this is more than one element, right? And let B be the collection of all sets such that, let B be a collection of all intervals. And all of us will form like this. If this is a, if x has smallest element, and if it has biggest element, then we have an interval of the form like this. And the collection is a basis for topology, and it's called the order topology. Okay. So here's a remark: if it has a no smallest element, then no interval like this exists. But three might exist, right? Because if we only said we have no smallest element, we might have biggest element. And by symmetry, if there's no large element, then no types of this, but might have this. But we always have this, right? And now, here's a simple check. We check that B is a basis. To check its basis, well, if X has. Well, if x has min and max, because the smallest elements always lies in type 2, and the biggest element always lies in type 3, right? And has, sorry, I'm confusing myself. If x has a min and max, then the minimum and maximum is in type of 2 or 3. And all the other elements are in type of 1, right? So it contains... So it contains all elements in the set, right? And next, the intersection. We just check the intersection. So intersections for any two elements are either empty or type or any of one of the types, right? So if I have two intervals, the intersection either to be empty or like this. And this is again interval of type one, right? So if X is in here, we have another interval, such a so the basis element, right? And if it's like a biggest, isn't this, and isn't this. 
then we have another element like this, right? So, or like this and this, and this element is again, right? So, again, or like, yep, this is in here, right? And you have another open interval like this, then you're in this open interval. So, we're all good. So, we're all good. So, this is indeed a basis. Okay. Now, so the standard topology, I, I skipped the standard topology, but it's just the order topology from usual order and R. And there's another type of order which is called a lexicographic order. So, if A, B, C, and D, right? If A is less than A is less than C, then we have like this, something like this. I don't like this. And and they're equal. And B is less than D, then it's the the interval so like should look like this. Okay. <laughs> so so if X is an ordered set and it is an element of X, then we can define four types of rays which is the set of all elements greater than a, less than a, greater equal to, less than a, greater. okay? Okay, so the rays are open. Why are they open? Because, okay, if x has a max or minimum, then this is simply just this, right? It's open. It's a type, it's a type two, right? It's a type two. Type two, I don't know. I forgot, but one of the types, not type one, and it has indeed open. It's a basis element, and otherwise, if it has no <coughs> maximum, this is basically the union of all type one where x is greater than a. Right? It's again open. Arbitrary union of open sets are union. <laughs> Arbitrary union of open sets are open. All right. So rays are open. We're good. And as another remark is that the rays form a subbasis of the order topology. It's a subbasis. So, first of all, all the rays are open, right? So the topology generated is in the to order topology, right? So all the rays are open. They take their intersection take their intersection and again uh, again you take all their union well final intersection is open and arbitrary union is still open so the topology generated by the rays are contained in the order topology right because the rays are are open the rays all the rays they're in the order topology you get what i'm saying and on the other hand the basis element in order topology, right, A and B can be expressed as this, right? If there's a maximum, then it would just be like this, right? So the basis element in order topology can be expressed as a finite intersection of <coughs> Of the the open rays, so there are subbases. There's finite intersections, right? So yeah, you take finite intersection and then you do arbitrary union there again. So there's a base basis element. So rays are form a basis subbases for order topology. Okay, so we're we're done with order topology. Not completely done, but for now. And then we're going to introduce product topology 1.0. And this is just 1.0. And 2.0 will be a bit, not a bit, it will be uh, pretty hard, okay? So we're still in product 1.0. So the product topology, the definition of product topology, so Cartesian product of X and Y, right? So X and Y has its own topology already. And the product topology on their Cartesian product is the topology having uh, the basis element are all u times v, where u open in x, 
and V is open and wide. So all sets like this forms the basis of the product topology. Okay? So first we have to check is indeed a basis, right? Is indeed a basis. So first of all, X and Y are in a basis, right? So for any X, Y, and X times Y, right? We have X times Y and the basis such that X times Y belongs to X times Y subset of X times Y. So it's, yeah, so this is good. And the second condition is that, so you have the intersection of two basis element is again a basis element, right? Because u1 is x u2 are open, v1 is x v2 are open. So they're again a form of u times v, right? So they're in the basis. So it's indeed a basis. Okay, so if v is a basis and c is a b basis of x, c basis of y, then d which is the product of all this is a basis for the product topology, right? So we're going to use lemma 13.2. Remember what's lemma 13.2? I think it's this one, right? Yeah. So to determine a collection of open sets is a basis. There are some conditions. Okay. So first, we let u open and x times y. And then we let little x times little y is in w. Then by the definition of product topology, right? By definition of product topology, there exists a basis. This is basis and product topology, right? There, there's u times v such that this is true, but u and v, they're open in x and y, right? So we have b and b, c and c, such that this is true, and x and y, this is true, and this is true, again. And by lemma 13.2, so learn 13.2 is that um, the collection open sets such that there's element c such that x c times u. So C is a basis. Okay, so for any W open in X and Y, for X and Y sign W, we have this belongs to D such that this, this, right? This element C such that C is U, then yes. So, so D is a basis. D is a basis by lemma 13.2. Okay, now there's a useful thing we can, we can express the uh, product topology and subbasis, right? So we're gonna define two projection maps, this one and this one, okay? So they're called the projection of x, y onto its first and second factors. So we're gonna do some observations. So if u is open in x, then the inverse image of u is basically entirely u times y, which is open in x times y. The other way around, like similar, right? So if this is u, this is the inverse image of u, and this is v, the inverse image of v, and their intersection. What can you say about intersection, right? They're like some some form of u times v, something something like this, right? Well, here's a the theorem. So the collection of all this and this is a subbasis for the product topology. So we're gonna so again we want to show that the two topologies are equal to each other, okay? So this is the product topology and this is the topology generated by subbasis S. Now, since we know that all the elements are in S are open, right? Because 
this is our observation, right? Is open x times y. So these are all unions of a collection of open sets. So S is a subset of T, the topology, right? Well, if all these sets are open, they can take finite intersection, and they can take their union. It's again still in the product topology. Yeah. And on the other hand, any open sets, right? Any basis elements, u times v, is basically equal to this. Right. You can just write it down, like write it out on our paper. And this, is and this. Is in topology generated by a subbasis because this is a finite intersection, right? The finite intersection, so uh, so we're done. Yep. So this is lecture two. It's really quick. Um, for next lecture, it's gonna be a bit harder.